Today's video, a failed Cree 100 watt, 1700 lumen, 5000 degree Kelvin, SA19 LED bulb. This bulb failed after about six months. It was used in a driveway light, well shielded from rain, no direct moisture, even though it says suitable for damp locations. So I'm going to tear this thing apart and let you guys know what failed. And then I'm going to send it back to Cree. I'll be trying a method that I've used once before. The heat gun applied near the seam to loosen up the adhesive in that area. Yeah, I wanted to get a fixture so I can try it and see if the heat did anything to it or for it. Nope. Still dead. Alright. Next step. Might as well do an LED count while we're here. 20 on the outer ring, 14 on the inner ring, 6 in the middle, 40 LEDs total. Alright, take the board off. Not much to that. I do believe that's a little bit different than the 60 watt. The outer housing slides right off. Actually, that is the heat sink. And now we've got a problem. Fully potted. Take some time to think about this. Well, I thought about it. Maybe the best thing to check first is the easiest thing to check. Check the LEDs. Pretty much have to do them one at a time, unless I'm going to use a big power supply and I'm not. If you remember on the, the first teardown I made of the 60 watt, these LEDs are probably dual die. Well, it's actually a single die, but it's divided in half, so it has two active LEDs package. So I'm going to try to light some of them. Let's see where this gets me. Indeed they are different. These packages have two of the dual LED dies. So here's what I'm going to try. Two partially dead 9 volt batteries that are about a little over 8 volts a piece. 16 volts 
approximately 12 volts to light the LED 180 ohm should give me about 27 milliamps should be fine all right we'll give this a try and get a light Well, we have a bunch of good LEDs. So the LEDs didn't fail. It's in the driver. So in we go. All right. Quick test. Yes, it's plastic. That's gonna be messy, but that's my way in for now. We'll see where it gets me. Looks promising. It's not like our TV. It peels off pretty easily. That's a good thing. At least for this purpose. First signs of a burn mark. Right there. Yep, a little more digging and a little more mess making. I separated the base from the board and found some more scorched parts. And here's the original one that we found that was scorched. And right up inside there. Here's a full shot of the back side of the board. what I would consider the front side. I'm going to check F3, the fuse. The fuse is good. So it didn't fail bad enough to blow the fuse. Yep. The resistors coming out to about a meg and a half and that's not right for a power resistor in this thing appears to be says uh, 2R4 so 2.4 ohms what it was supposed to be and it is no more and I'm not even going to try to fix this I think at this point that's good enough to where I can send it back to Cree I've already got a prepaid shipping label. So we'll see what they think about it. Well I'm back for a few parting comments before I end this video. The history of this bulb started I installed it at my mother's house back in probably September or October of 2016. It was in a, um, a driveway lamp 
It was the old gas burner style lamps that would be right beside the driveway. It's not a converted one, it was originally an electric one. But it's got really good flow through ventilation. There's no way water could ever get into it. It's completely covered over on the top with a closed half dome. There's ventilation up underneath there and from the very bottom of the fixture upwards. So it's got great flow through ventilation. Um, a few bugs get in there, but there were no bugs on the bulb. So it really couldn't have been weather. When I called Creed to report them to see if I could get a replacement, one of the first questions they asked was, where did you have it installed? And I told them, outdoor fixture. And I also told them that it was not exposed to any direct weather other than temperature extremes. Not that extreme. Kansas City, Missouri, Midwest, we don't have extreme winters anymore. Have you all noticed that? Anyway, I digress. So I was talking to her, although she complained about me using it outdoors, even though I quoted what was on the bulb and what was on the box. They said, well, it doesn't mean outdoors. And I said, well, it doesn't say not outdoors. She didn't complain too much. They went ahead and freely sent me a new bulb as a replacement, which I got in about five days. And so I um, was asking her, what do, I, what do I do with this one? They didn't want it back. And she said, however, she came back and said, you know, I'm going to send you a free return label for that bulb. And we'll send it to our engineering department and have them diagnose it and see what the failure mode was. And I was like, that sounds good. And I made the comment that it's probably a good thing that they were going to want the bulb back because I was going to do a teardown to find out why it died. I packaged it up, put the label on it, and it sat on the shelf for about three weeks. And every day I'd look at that box thinking, what do I really gain by sending it back to them? I want to see what happened. And here we are. Now we know. Resistors. And I would bet that that MOSFET is dead. Let's do a quick check. I don't know why I didn't check that earlier. MOSFET is not shorted. Now that's a tough one. Hard to know what happened to that one. Capacitor's not shorted. Bridge rectifier isn't shorted or it would have blown the fuse. Could be the controller chip. It's real small. It's about the size of a a 805 resistor. It could be blown. Maybe that's what happened. But this is what Cree's going to get back right there. They don't need all this mess. That's the important parts. LEDs are all good. Board died. I want to know why. Will they tell me? I seriously doubt it. Have a good day. God bless.